All information contained in this podcast is general in nature and does not consider your individual circumstances. You should consider the appropriateness of this information with regards to your individual objectives, financial situation, and needs. Welcome to Sharing More Than The Sheets, a podcast to help you and your partner make better financial and lifestyle decisions so that you can both focus on the things that you love. I'm your host, Michael Curry, financial planner, green thumb, husband, and just dad. This segment is called Michael's Magic Moment. It's my opportunity to play a little snippet from one of our previous episodes, which resonated with our listeners that I received feedback from, or I felt really had an impact on some people's lives. Hope you enjoy. Are you scared of anything? For me, I've got two big fears. The first one is heights. Me going on a ride at a theme park being up on a really high ladder looking down for me it's it's one of the, I'm not comfortable with it um personally I could probably do it but I just hate it I'm just not comfortable with heights so I just avoid heights where I can I could look outside the window of a building I can look outside the window of an airplane I can probably go on a ladder that's 2 or 3 meters high but any more than that and my heart starts to beat really fast and I get this this sense of of fear Another fear that I have, and this is something that I've had to work on over the years, is the fear of being judged, the fear of making mistakes, and the fear of um, being seen as someone that's not perfect. And p- part of that was this podcast, you know, putting myself out there and talking um, and just being myself in front of a microphone. Um, that, that was a fear I had. And it was something that was always at the back of my mind, which um, I've learnt to, to, to obviously work with. Um, and, um, and now I'm very comfortable saying almost anything I want. And that's, and to me, I see that as a, as a big success. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is we all have different fears. And to some people, their fears stop them from doing things that they really want to do. Now, for me, I don't really have a passion to go skydiving. Um, I don't really have a passion to um, go on a ride at Dreamworld. Um, I don't really have a passion to become a roofer. So I don't have any, you know, I don't have any um, urges at the moment to overcome my fear of heights. But what I did have is a passion of helping people and a passion to put myself out there and be able to to spread good news and to help other people on like a mass scale. And um, I worked on that and was able to start this podcast show, um, which I'm, you know, quite proud of. A fear that I see regularly as an advisor is the fear of investing. Many people that I come across tell me that they've, they want to invest. They've always wanted to invest. It's been on their mind. They talk about it as a couple. But there's something stopping them. And sometimes it could be fear of making mistakes, the fear of failure, the fear of, um, you know, obviously losing money, which is, is a fear we all have, obviously, when we invest money. But sometimes this fear can be so serious that some people do, do nothing about it and that it stops them from from making decisions. Uh, it could be as simple as the risk of losing money in investments, but even the, the risk of potentially being seen as a failure by your peers if you set up a business or you you decide to put your money into something. But there are things that you can do to manage this fear and overcome it. Now, firstly, I'm not saying that you should ignore your gut feeling. Um, A gut feeling is a very, very important thing. Your intuition, you cannot, do not underestimate the power of intuition um, in your gut. So you should always do something that you're comfortable with. So I just want to make that really clear, especially when it comes to investing. But at the same time, it's really important to distinguish between a gut feeling and just literally pure fear and to do things. And there's things that you can do, which I'll go through in a moment, to help you overcome this fear or manage it. The reason this can be an issue is because a lot of us want to get ahead in life and something like this can stop you from doing that financially. Secondly, especially when I'm talking to a couple, sometimes one person is so comfortable Um, they've got almost no fear of investing and the other person does. And that can cause some conflict because it could cause resentment later on if they look back and one person says, oh, you know, if it was up to me, we would have done this 10 years ago. It's all your fault. We never did X, Y, and Z. It can also cause a bit of a mismatch in goals. Um, And even worse, it could create this, this, um, this 
environment where two people aren't really working together and they're not on the same page because they just don't feel like they can agree on much either. The first thing I'll say is those that have a fear of investing, a way to overcome it is to start small. So there's no need to put your life savings into an investment. There's no need to sell your house and sell everything you own and put it all on black. Start small. You could start with $10. You could start with $1,000. You can start with $5,000, but start small just to sort of dip your feet in the water, just to get a better idea as to what it's about, what's involved, what does the process look like? Um, you know, if somebody has a fear of swimming, they don't jump straight into the pool. They first walk into the, sh- they walk in the shallow end and they, you know, get a bit of a feel as to what it feels like. And then they sort of maybe get a bit deeper slowly. The second thing is to educate yourself. For me, I'm big on education. And for me, education is so important because when I educate people, I feel like their comfort levels change. If you know more about something, if you know the ins and outs, you're going to be a lot more comfortable with it. Um, that those that go through a very serious medical surgery, um, you know, an, an operation, when a doctor educates them on things and when a specialist explains to them what's happening, what the process is going to be, why this is happening, they feel more comfortable with it. If somebody has a condition, um, like a, a terminal condition, and they do research about that condition, how it works, why this is happening to their body, why that's ha- they, they become more comfortable with it as well. Same with investing. If you educate yourself on what investments are, how they work, what's a share, um, why do share prices do this, why do property prices do that, what are the costs involved, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages, you'll find that that education will make such a difference to your decision making. Another one is to set expectations. Um, and this can be done by working out your risk tolerance. So just to work out from day one, this is we do this as advisors, we work out someone's risk profile. And we work out whether they're a high risk, high growth investor or a low risk, um, low growth investor. And this goes back to investing 101, where we discuss the relationship between risk and return, where the higher the risk, the higher the return, and the lower the risk, the lower the return. And some people sit on one end of the spectrum, or sometimes they sit in the middle, or a little bit over here, or a little bit over there. But if you can set your expectations and work out, yep, I'm going to be high risk, and I'm going to, there's potentially there's going to be high return, but also there's, there could be high loss. Um, or, or the other way around, where you think, you know what, I'm not going to invest much. I'm going to be very conservative. I'm not expecting humongous returns uh, because I understand that I'm not taking on much risk. If you can set these expectations from day one, it really does help with that as well because you you could sort of manage those expectations. So not, not so that you know what to expect because nobody has a crystal ball, but you sort of will have an idea And emotionally, you know what you're getting yourself into as well. It also helps because it'll also minimize the potential of you feeling, um, you know, overwhelmed, underwhelmed, or even disappointed. You know, if you expected something up here, but you got this, then you might be like, well, it wasn't even worth all the stress. The fourth thing is to pay attention, but don't get obsessed. Now, when it comes to investing, it's very common for people to get obsessed and to check their investments every single minute or every single day. Statistically, I've seen research that shows that those, in some cases, those that check their investments less often are actually more likely to to, to make money. Um, The the issue is when you get too obsessed and you check investments all the time, you're going to get freaked out when things go up and down. Um, I mean, you'll get freaked out when things go down. You'll get really excited when things go up. You might get discouraged at certain times. And it's very easy to throw your hands up in the air and be like, no, this is too stressful. Those that check their investments on a less frequent basis, um, or at least pay attention to them, but don't get too obsessed, are less likely to get phased by big drops, for example, and they're more likely to sit, sit back and look at the big picture as an overall picture. Another one is not to let volatility scare you. So as I just said, markets go up and down and there's volatility. And before you start to invest, and this is part of setting expectations, understand what volatility is and what it looks like. Um, if you are investing into something that's quite volatile, like a type of investment like shares that could, you know, it could go up and down by the minute, then understand what volatility, what it, what shares have done in the past, maybe that particular share. Step back, look at it over six months, over six years, and just get an idea as to what you could have in store for you. Now, obviously, past performance is not an indicator of future performance. So you can't really look at what a share's done and expect it to do the same in the future. But it could give you an idea as to what shares can do. And 
again, once you understand it and you educate yourself, you are more likely to accept volatility as well. But this also comes down to your risk profile and setting expectations. But it's very normal for markets to fluctuate. Um, there isn't a one size fits all approach and there are different horizons. Um, if you're investing for something over the next six months, you're probably not going to go for something that's immensely risky. If you're investing into something over the next 10 or 20 years, so if you're, you're in, your period of investment is longer, your time frame is longer, you're more likely and more likely to feel comfortable in something that's a bit more risky, for example. The sixth point I want to mention is avoiding moving your money around every time there's a change in the market. Um, I talk to so many people that try to, you know, time, time the market, they try to sell here and buy there and they get, again, they get scared and they just, they just think that, okay, no, 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 this was a bad idea. Let's just change this or no, this is the perfect time to sell. The, the, the issue is that when you're trying to time the market, most of the time you're probably going to get it wrong. And, a lot of the time when you're doing these things, you're moving money around different investments very quickly, uh, very frequently. Sometimes you're doing it out of fear and you're doing it out of emotion as well. And if you're doing it out of fear and emotion, you're more likely to make decisions based off fear and emotion. And if you're making decisions based off fear and emotion, they're probably not logical decisions. And that where that's where me as an advisor, I see issues all the time where people try to do things themselves. They make a couple of really good decisions but then they make some other ones which sort of just ruins everything. So avoiding moving your money around every time there's a change in the market is something which I would encourage you to keep top of mind uh, when it comes to investing. So w with all these points, doing these things and, under and understanding what's involved, I personally feel would really help when it comes to overcoming a fear of investing. Overcoming a fear of investing can make a big difference to your life. Um, because I meet many people that for years have been able to invest, but just haven't because of this fear and because they didn't manage the fear, or maybe they didn't know where to begin. It really helps to have a financial advisor, to talk to a financial advisor, because that's where we help with the education side of things, the expectations. Um, and most likely we have dealt with your situation before where I see people on so many different spectrums, um, and that have fears for so many different reasons. And we are normally able to comfort people to understand where they're coming from um, and even recommend investments that suit their circumstance. Um, because again, what I recommend to someone that's young and that has a long time to invest their money, the, the way I recommend their investments is going to be very different to someone that's a lot older, for example. Or I'm going to recommend different investments or a different structure to someone that has $5,000 compared to somebody that has $5 million. So speak to a financial advisor if you're able to. Um, feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to have discussions and happy to provide value where I can. And listen to these points. Maybe your partner needs to listen to this episode. Maybe a friend of yours does. Um, if you have, if you know someone that is regularly talking to you about investments but isn't really doing anything, they definitely need to listen to it because that person is probably too scared to make decisions. Some people can get very indecisive when they don't know where to start, what to do. And this fear can sometimes overcome, it can, you know, over, overshadow their, 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 their actions. And sometimes it could lead to no action at all. So I hope this has helped. Um, again, share it with anyone that you think that might benefit from the episode. But if you can, if you have a fear of investing, if you can overcome it, it will make a big difference to your life, to your family's life. And hopefully, it will help you do better, be better, and feel better. Thanks for joining us on Sharing More Than The Sheets. Please make sure you subscribe to be updated with future episode releases. And feel free to share this episode with any friends or family that you think it might benefit. Please visit us at sharingmorethanthesheets.com.au to submit questions or requests for future podcast topics. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au.